Now today we're going to talk about some standard models that we use for the mining industry. Uh, anybody who gets involved in information management will complain about how complex the industry is, uh, how many variables we have to try and track and monitor and integrate. Uh, and to help those conversations along, it is really useful to have some standard models that we can refer to. So here is a, on single A4 sheet, a three level process model of the mining industry. Now, it took quite a long time. It was two years of work uh, for people on three continents arguing with each other once a month, and this is the end result. It's a very robust model. It will allow you to engage in the conversation at any part of the value chain in any mining method anywhere in the world. It covers both the core and all the support processes, uh, as well as your ability to have conversations at operational, strategic and tactical levels. Um, and there is 48 pages of definitions if you want to get into the background to the model. Uh, today I shall be talking about the implication of the different mining methods along with what constitutes the mine planning process and we will have a look at how we reconcile at an operational level uh, between what comes out of the plant uh, with what was in the ground or what we thought was in the ground. So what the model does for us at the first level, level zero as we call it, that is the enterprise level. We have level one, which is a value chain level, and level two is the process layer. And you have all of that on one page. What we have done with it at MineRP is to introduce further levels of detail. If I get down to level three, that's the sub-process level, that is how we understand the mining business in, different, in the different mining methods. And a level four is the task level. That's where the real mining business takes place. So if I take my level three understanding to a client and ask him, this is how I understand your business, what do you really do? I come back with a level four of detail, which allows me to really understand the mining business from the client's perspective. It helps set the direction for our software development teams. And of course, any consulting we have to do with mining clients all gets done on that same basis. Now, what are the implications of the different mining methods? Primarily, different mining methods have different information requirements. And to try and help weave our way through all of the complexity, uh, we have this uh, model which fits in the center of the open group model. We first have a look at mine types. If you ask your mother how many different mine types does she know, she might well tell you underground and surface. And to the layman, that's about as far as it goes. But if you get involved, you want to know the rock type. Is it hard or is it soft? Um, it's not a hard and fast boundary, but typically for this conversation, hard rock needs to be drilled and blasted. Soft rock can be excavated by some mechanical means. And then we look at mining types. Uh, underground hard rock flat tabular, like we have in the South African gold and uranium. Underground hard massive, which you would find typically for most other minerals around the world. Underground soft, we've separated out coal for two reasons, methane, and coal dust. If you have a mining disaster on your hands, it's one or both of those things have gone wrong. And so their information requirements, the technology they use are quite different. Uh, solution mining is when we put something under the ground in order to pull something else out. So I could put steam down and pull sulfur out. I can put acid down and pull uranium out. Um, think of it, uh, this is verging on the oil and gas, the fracking. I pump some high pressure liquids down and I release the gas. Underground soft other are things like phosphates, salts, uh, you know, the fertilizers and um, things typically we want to keep water away from while we're mining. If we look at the surface mines, the hard rock, we have open pit, but we also have open pit for soft rock. The difference is in an open pit mine for hard rock, the more I mine, the wider and deeper the hole gets. If I'm in soft rock, typically a coal seam or something, I make a hole and I move the hole across the countryside. Uh, the glory hole is where I'm mining at the top of a mountain and I've got to pull all the rock up. Each truckload comes to the top of the mountain and goes back down the mountain to the plant. I can come in under the mountain, put in a hole from the pit straight to a, a loco, pull the rock out all straight to the plant. Uh, it's a significantly different enough mining method to warrant different information requirements. And then surface soft placer deposits are things typically that we can move with water. Gravels, sands, reclaiming slimes, dams and the like. And so in layman's terms, 
just at this level, we can talk to many different mining methods and their implications for information management. If you are a mining engineer, there will be a couple of other levels of conversation, typically how we make the hole in the ground and how we support them. And having had those conversations, you will arrive at a title, which is your specific mining method. Having these standard models enables us to have all sorts of conversations and draw lots more detail and create more visual models uh, to help people understand the business and how to manage information across it.